Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing? Our ship continues to take water, so I think at best we begin. Uh, life rafts are in the back, women and children first. Mick Rank is laughing at this with a cigar and with a new buddy, Noah. So here we are. I'm Father Ryan Lewis. I'm a dear friend of the uh, Rank family, uh, Lejeune's family, the Quant family. Privileged to be with you. Let's begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Michael, Mick, died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Mick, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We listen to words from sacred scripture chosen by the family. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. And this is from John's Gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This time I invite, I invite Mick's daughter, Anna, to come forward for her reflections. Hi guys. <laughs> um, thank you guys for coming. I'm extremely humbled by all the people that decided to show up in this lovely weather that I thought would maybe let up for a minute today, maybe just one. We had a much different vision on how today would go, but um, clearly the love for my father knows no weather. <laughs> um, and I think that this is his last, last little test to see how tough we are. Uh, congratulations, you all passed. <laughs> um, there's obviously entirely too much I can say about my dad. A true gentleman with an electric smile, a ferocious reader, an athlete, <clears throat> part-time conspiracy theorist, <laughs> amateur backyard astronomer, <clears throat> and always the life of the party. He had a perspective on life that was unmatched, but what sticked out to me the most was his welcoming heart. This space, I would be gesturing to mixed field right now that you can see the property, was welcome to everyone. He was a connector of people. His advice to me when meeting somebody new would always be to either ask them what they're reading or ask, what should I be reading? 
He viewed this as the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you come from, if you were open-minded in your search for knowledge and different perspectives, you were okay in his book. Um, <laughs> sorry, as my politics slightly changed after I flew the coop, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I won't dive into it, but um, we had some pretty epic debates. But he would always end the conversation we had by acknowledging my well-articulated and thought-out viewpoints, and usually a high five. We would never leave angry. We loved to talk. He challenged me, he encouraged me, and he always had my back. I think his love for dancing correlated closest to his zest for life. And I quote, if you don't dance the first song, you can't dance them all. <laughs> and, he <dan> <laughs> and he danced every single one, and he left the parties with sweat-soaked sho shirts every single time. The dance floor is also the place where my brother and I would watch my parents in admirations and say, that, that is the goal. I think this is where I might miss him the most. There's no better dancing partner than Mick Rank, and I know a lot of people can say that in this room. <laughs> that was an emotional break, okay. Speaking of my parents' relationship, <clears throat> Junior, I couldn't honor dad without mentioning his sidekick. He clearly knew what he was doing when he proposed to you after only three months of dating. You went toe to toe with him in life and he walked with him to the end with the dignity, respect, and love he deserved. a beautiful and full life because he had you by his side. And David, brother, <laughs> I know you sacrificed these last couple years to be the rock that we needed. You held it down. You took care of his property, his place, and us. You honored him and he was so proud of you. He will be sorely missed, but greater than sorrow for his death is the joy that he spread in his life. My dad said, life to e my dad said yes to life every day. He was an exemplary, an exemplary man and an even great, better father. I am heartbroken, but I'm also filled with profound gratitude. Grateful to have been my father's daughter to have had him as my North Star for 32 years, which I know will continue. Grateful to have been so loved. Thank you, Dad, you did great. <laughs> um, thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> um, Another thing my dad loved was music, and there were a few people in his life that he would beg to sing every time they were here, <laughs> whether they wanted to or not. And Molly and Josh Vettner were two of his favorites, and they're going to play a song for you guys. Toughness, something we repeat often, is a phrase that Mick said right on these fields. <laughs> Everybody played frisbee. Anna was the only girl out there, just like rough and tough and tumble. And she would miss something, and he'd go, a dive would have had it, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. Oh, no, I'm taking it. Yep. has given us years of happiness here now we must part and as the angels 
without you, my love. And when God calls for you, I'm left alone, but we will meet in heaven above. Oh, my darling, my darling, my heart breaks as you take your long journey. Ooh, 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 ooh. Fond memories I keep of happy ways that on earth we try. see with the eyes of faith uh, that Mick has gone on this long journey, uh, but we see that the journey, as we read in the gospel, is not one that he walks alone, just as his amazing and incredible and consequential life here on earth was one where he never walked alone. He always walked with others. So Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, and yet we are really sad, and we're going to miss him, and that's uh, a very, very natural thing. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. And Jesus says, I will go, and I will prepare a place for you. And so we know he's on a journey, but it has a destination in faith. A dwelling place prepared for Mick by God. Now, I want to talk about place in Mick's life just briefly. Uh, this place where we gather this afternoon to celebrate his life. An important, I would say, sacred place in Mick's life, in his family's life. Uh, Mick came to us from a place, from a context. Uh, the wonderful family that he grew up in, the beautiful Lejeune, whom he took as his wife, the beautiful children they brought into the world, uh, his capacity to find a place in his heart, a place in his life for all comers. A beautiful, beautiful gift where those who needed a place to feel safe, to feel loved, to feel understood, to feel accepted, and Mick ranks seemingly with an endless reservoir of energy, said no to no one, said yes to everyone, 
made relationships with everyone. How many consider this physical place that we're at to be special because of beautiful, unforgettable times spent here with wonderful people and with Mick and Lejeune orchestrating it all? And that his... And that his earthly journey ended here in the house he grew up in. And in the Christian tradition, we talk about the passing from this life to the next. The Latin word is transitus. I love it. Tran transition would be the best English, uh, uh, the best English version of it. Because it really is. It's a transition. And we truly believe that he is with us. And our job now to honor this man we loved, for me, almost 20 years of friendship through the Quant family, which is Lejeune's family, and then getting to know the ranks and beautiful times spent up here, and so many more amazing times out in, in western Iowa, eastern Nebraska, where Lejeune's people still uh, reign. Uh, and Mick, you know, endlessly curious. A guy from Lancaster, and he was Mr. Lancaster. Uh, you might have thought would have been totally and completely out of place in rural Midwest, Iowa. He loved it. He relished it. He didn't skip a chance to get out there and be with his wife's in-laws and their wonderful family. And so many of them are here, and they've made the trek, and thank you so much. It just speaks to me. I'm going to be brief. Three principal things we need to do this afternoon. Number one, when you receive a good gift, and Mick and Lejeune would have taught uh, David and Anna this, you better say thank you. You better. Well, we received one amazing, terrific gift in the life of Mick Rank and in his presence in our lives. I don't care how you knew him. And if I started listing the organizations that he was a part of, the, the groups and in the community and, and in the law community and beyond, we'd be here all afternoon. But however you knew him, he touched your life, he enriched your life, you're better for having known him. A gift would be to try to be like him, to try to, uh, the Mick that touched you, let yourself go out and touch others with that same Mick sort of resolve and stick to itiveness. Uh, to make the world a better place, to leave things better than you found it. But we say thanks to God for his life. We acknowledge that he was a gift to us from God. And with sad, absolutely, sad hearts, but boy, they're also grateful hearts. We hand him back to God. And maybe that makes it a little easier uh, to give him back to the God who first gave him to us. Number two, we pray for his eternal rest. We pray that even now he could be experiencing, and dare I say, holding court, <laughs> at the eternal banquet in heaven and uh, the topics just got a lot more diverse and interesting uh, around the eternal banquet table uh, and and finally and maybe this is the most important for comfort and for peace for Lejeune for David and Anna for the extended rank family uh, Quant family all those friends neighbors uh, fellow uh, community uh, volunteers and organizers, all who are going to feel this void acutely. I love this right here. Because when we're grieving, when we're sad, when one of our own who we have loved dies and is no longer going to be with us here earthly, we're sad. But I love this. The community comes together. We absolutely come together. No one should feel like they have to grieve or be sad in isolation. No. We come together, we look out for each other, we lift each other up in prayer and with support. And if you need an example for how to do that, Mick Rank. Mick Rank. So eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace, and may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Son David. Bear feet. I'm really regretting not going first today. It's a tough act to follow so far, I'll tell you what. Whew. Um, first off, thank you to everyone. This is, I mean, more than I could have even hoped for. This is amazing. Thank you to everyone that made this trip out. Friends, family, 
even enemies are probably here too, I don't know. Um, sorry if I can get this together here. Um, second off, I'd like to apologize. I didn't tell everyone to come out early for softball. I don't know what I was thinking, sorry dad, you know. A quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. It's not the life, the length of life, but the depth of life. My dad really dug deep, especially around here. As we all know, my dad lived for sports and activity. He was a man that could make a person who had never touched a baseball bat or kicked a soccer ball feel like an Olympic athlete. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it happen, so. Uh, his energetic and positive attitude would put sunny smiles on the rainiest of days. <laughs> he was a wizard with the fungo bat and always made sure that everyone was warmed up and stretched out f before the first game. Liability reasons, of course. <laughs> always a gentleman, both on and off the playing field, he would battle through to the final inning, but always end up the game with a smile, a good game, and a handshake no matter what the outcome. His etiquette and general, gentle mannerisms have shaped me more than any other to be the man that I am today. He always pushed me to be active, as active as possible. Where I wasn't always the reader that he was, thank you, Anna. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like to think that I made up for it in other ways. Doing backflips with my dad into the pool before I could even walk had something to do with my swimming career, I think. Um, running barefoot all summer long till my feet were raw had something to do with my track experience. However, when I told my dad in high school that I wanted to join the co-ed cheerleading squad, his response was like no other. Where a lot of parents might question or object, since I had spent so much time dedicated to swimming and other sports, he simply said, okay. Did you know that your grandfather was a cheerleader at Princeton? <laughs> I, uh, so we moved forward from that. <laughs> this, uh, this freedom and open-mindedness is what sent me on a career that has taken me literally around the world and back, and I will forever, forever be grateful. When I initially sat down to start pulling together some thoughts for this, I panicked, took off towards the pool, and hoped that would give me some focus and once I regained consciousness after getting out of the pool, I started to think about all the people that have been in the pool and then all the people that have been to the property over the years. Through all this, I realized the one word that everybody keeps bringing up is welcoming. This is the idea that has been passed down over decades, both sides of my family, outside of my mom, of course. There aren't many other people more welcoming. When someone would ask, do you mind if we bring over a friend to hang out? His immediate response was, before you even finish the sentence, was, sure, bring them all. <laughs> One example of this was when uh, we were playing a backyard baseball game and my mother noticed two couples coming down the driveway. Do you know who they are? Do you recognize them? No. My dad takes off up the driveway. After introducing himself, he realized that there were two French couples and immediately it was, oh, well, I speak some French, come on down and play softball. <laughs> they ended up staying for the entire night. Um, another example, we, um, <laughs> this is really gonna sound weird. Um, it was a woman that was making a biking adventure with her carriage in tow from Vermont all the way down through Pennsylvania. She had reached out, reached out to one of the local pastors asking if he had any suggestions for places for her to stay she was not exactly, she was homeless at the moment. Of course, the pastor reached out to my dad because, I mean, why not? Um, of course, I mean, like anyone, when a random homeless bicyclist shows up at your door, my, uh, my mom was a little hesitant to bring her in to the house. Instead of turning her away though, my dad offered up the shelter of our tool shed. <laughs> That one right there, the little one, not even the barn, the little one right there. <laughs> yeah, she, she stayed for the night and the next day was rejuvenated, rested, and ready to continue that bike tour. <laughs> Home is the foundation from which we draw our strength and tranquility. 
This was his home, and this is why we chose to honor him here today, rain or shine. In doing some reading, I found a quote that I thought was fitting. We inspire the people who we benefit from our philanthropic contributions, creating a network of unaffected and honest giving that spreads outward like ripples in a still pond. His heartfelt willingness to put aside his own needs in order to help others was unmatched. In closing, I can only hope that these words and the actions of my father can help everyone to move forward in a positive direction, knowing that he truly was a believer in everyone and he refused to give up that mentality even in his final days here at the house. In the words of William Wallace, my, my brave heart friend, also my, one of my favorite movies, of course, every man dies, but not every man truly lives. Love you, Dad. Um, may, many of you may have been confused with the, uh, the obituary in the paper with the dog A comment. This was a term that had just evolved over the years. It was a hello, a goodbye, a cheers, what's up? And in the end, it was the battle cry of this house for a Phillies baseball game. So if we could all, on three, just let out one big dog A for my dad, I'd really appreciate it. One, two, three. Doggy! Thank you all very much. Quick introduction, ladies. Um, yet another trio of women that my dad forced to sing on many occasions. Um, my best friends, my sisters, Catherine, Allison, and Emily Fritz. Singing Ave Maria. Barbara Rank. Thank you, Father Lewis. Um, my gosh, after that, it reminds me of the phrase, singing is praying twice. 
Thank you for that. Thank you, Father Lewis, everyone who's here. Um, I had the privilege of being Mick Rank's sister-in-law for 37 years. I have a feeling now that he, you don't have a premonition, but he lived faster, harder, funnier, curiouser, and more caring, maybe because of the shorter years than you might have had. Um, but the, and that's a lasting impression. But the other impression I have is of Anna, David, and Lejeune. And I just can't tell you that if you want to see what the Holy Family looks like in person, that's it. <laughs> Anna, David, everything that from behind the scenes from far away, I've watched you do in caring for your mother and your father. It was so beautiful. I, I will never, ever forget. That is how we need to love. Thank you. We're going to have the uh, final prayers of commendation, and uh, that will conclude our formal service. Just uh, a couple of announcements. <laughs> First of all, uh, mix in earnment uh, will take place at a later time, and that'll be private for uh, for the family. So there's there's nothing today following this service in terms of uh, uh, the in earnment. Uh, immediately following the, our conclusion here, please uh, get yourself to higher ground. And uh, <laughs> what the family really wants this afternoon to be is a celebration of mixed life. There are so many stories that all of us have. And having people come up to the microphone, we would be here all night and into tomorrow. But we want you to really spend your time, enjoy food and drink, of course, and each other's company. But uh, share amongst yourselves your Mick stories and your Mick remembrances. And uh, this family will do the best they can. Uh, but you would expect from Mick uh, this amazing turnout. Uh, it'll be a daunting task. But uh, uh, they love you all, and they are so, so grateful for your presence. Why don't we stand for the final commendation? Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Mick in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he shall rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all of the many blessings which you bestowed upon Mick in this life, especially his wife Lejeune, David and Anna, his children, his extended family, and the many, the army, the legion that he touched in so many beautiful ways. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Mick forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mick, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come and welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Can I have an amen? Amen. Amen. God bless everybody.